Hey, Buzzheads, Curtis Tucker here with Enid Buzz. I am out at Johnston Seed Company. Today they are celebrating 125 years in business here in Enid, Oklahoma. A great celebration, family-owned business. Uh, we've got uh, Governor Fallon is here. They're going to do a ribbon cutting. We've got the chamber here. A lot of, uh, I see uh, Todd Lamb, uh, Mayor Shuey is out here. So a lot of people out here. Uh, open house here until about 2 o'clock today. We are here at uh, 319 West Chestnut, so you guys can drop by. They'll give you some tours of uh, the facilities out here and everything. So uh, I'm going to stay live, try to go through the uh, ribbon cutting and any remarks by Governor Fallon or Mayor Shuey. So anyway, this is kind of what's going on out here at Johnston Seed Company. Got the uh, the governor's actually in this shot, kind of in the middle of the crowd there. Yeah, thanks for checking in, Susan. That's a, a long time, uh, 125 years for one business. So, a great celebration. Everybody coming out. They've got, I believe, a retail location here now. They're going to give tours, uh, let everybody see what they've got going on out here, all the new projects. Governor Fallon talking to some people. We got the chamber uh, getting ready to do a ribbon cutting. They sell a lot of seed, a lot of uh, grass uh, stuff for your lawn. I believe they sell sod. So basically anything to do with uh, landscaping, uh, with uh, lawns and things like that. I think that's mostly what they, I, I can ask some questions here in a little while. Todd, how are you? Good, brother. You all right? I'm doing good. You're on. You're on. You're live. I've, you got anything to tell the people of Enid while you're here? Hey, it's always great to be in Enid. Always a special day. 125 years. It's a long time. 125 years of anything. I mean, anything is pretty awesome. It is. And like, just like you, I grew up in the shadows of this place. I know. Literally, the I baseball know. field. Yeah. You know, I might say that today, but it's it's great, great, great day. Yeah. John to see 125 years. Yeah, well, great, great to see you in town. Good, good luck you, on the campaign. Yeah. All that good stuff. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Good to see you. Yes, that was Todd Lamb running for governor. Um, currently the lieutenant governor. Try to get some shots of Mayor Shuey with the governor. No, 
know, this is not invitation only. Public is, uh, is everybody can come out. Uh, they will give tours of the facility. They are going to be open until 2 p.m. with the, this, uh, uh, I guess, celebration. So, no, everybody is invited. Come on out. Yeah. Here. Squeeze on in. Here we got Mayor. Here we got Mayor Shuey here celebrating 125 years at Johnston. Any comments on that? Been in this facility for 70 years. It's a long time. Nancy. Good company. Good company. How you doing? Yeah. Yeah. We got Mayor Shuey right here. Quite ready here. Oh, I know that's a lot of stuff there, hey, John. Hey, Aaron, how you doing? Hey, Chance, how you doing? Hey, good chance. How you doing? I've been a little busy. Come on in, let's get your seats. Everybody outside, you can come on in. All right, we're going to be showing some videos. state in the Union, Mr. Johnston probably had no idea that his little feed and seed store in Enid would one day become an internationally recognized leader in seeded Bermuda grass products, research, and genetics. I bought the family out in 76. We established the Rhines of Bermuda grass, the Riviera of Bermuda grass, and the cattle and switch grass. In 1964, I graduated from college on Thursday. I got married on Saturday and had me work with Johnson's on Monday. <laughs> so that was the beginning of my career with Johnson's. Today, Johnston products are in strong demand for use in conservation efforts, professional landscaping, and on sporting fields across the globe. Working with the nation's leading university in agricultural sciences, Johnston Seed Company, in collaboration with others, exclusively licensed Guyman Bermuda Grass, a cold tolerance seeded Bermuda grass that was distributed and marketed across the U.S. Continuing the university partnership, Johnston Seed Company developed Wrangler, a forage type of seeded Bermuda grass that has become the number one selling cold tolerant variety in the United States. Dr. Talaferro is a genius. 
He's been uh, breeding for us since 2006, and there's a lot of science to what we do, but there's even more art, and he has got it down. I joined the faculty uh, at Oklahoma State University in the agronomy department, uh, breeding products that we felt had some potential to be uh, commercialized, and uh, that was my involvement with Johnston Seed Company on a working basis. In 2001, after riding on the success of Guyman and Wrangler, Johnston's continued to work with Oklahoma State University, and again licensed another cold tolerant seeded turf type of Bermuda grass called Riviera. The Riviera variety became the first ever seeded Bermuda grass turf to top the rankings in the world renowned NTEP National Turf Grass Evaluation Program. And our seeded varieties have led that trial since 2001. You know, that trial and our customers are a testament to the superiority of our product. The Riviera variety has become the go-to choice of seeded Bermuda grass for major baseball fields, college football fields, and some of the most recognized golf courses in the world, and in thousands upon thousands of neighborhood yards, too. Over the years, Johnston Seed Company has produced several product lines, including needed grasses, wildflowers, and hundreds of other products for the agricultural professional and the backyard gardener alike. Available through a trusted network of dealers and distributors, many Johnston Seed products are available online at johnstonseed.com. The people who make up Johnston Seed Company know the value hard work and the grit it takes to remain in business through depressions and recessions, booms and busts. When something has my family's name on it, I want it to be the best. I learned so much from the people that were already there in the business. I knew nothing about this seed business when I went to work for Johnson. Johnson's has always been very aggressive and progressive. Uh, it was a real privilege to be able to get to know and uh, learn from some of the pioneers in the seed and grain industry. From a small feed, seed, and livestock store to one of the world's leaders in Bermuda grass products, Johnston Seed Company is harnessing the pioneering spirit of W.B. Johnston for others to follow. Not stopping and resting on their laurels, the people of JSC roll up their sleeves every day, every hour, every minute, working for customers across the globe to develop and deliver the finest agricultural products available today. And they do it all from Enid, Oklahoma, a little town in America's heartland. Well, Johnson Seed Company has been a critical part of the economy for a century plus in Oklahoma. I have bought my seed wheat from them for years. They sell a variety of grass seeds and other plants. They're on the cutting edge technology-wise when it comes to conservation, to crop production, all those kind of things. But not just the services they provide farmers. They've been a huge employer in Indian Oklahoma and in North Central Oklahoma for years and years and years. And I've known the family, not just for my entire tenure in Congress, but before that. And whether you want to call them characters or wonderful people or outstanding business executives, from Lou to Butch, to Joey, what a family. Not just good business people, but they're a lot of fun to be around, always. Johnston Seed Company, planting the seeds of success since 1893. And the best is yet to come. Uh, 
Justin Seed Company is one of those companies here in town that everybody knows about, but not everybody knows exactly what they do. And I really appreciate that video, Joe. It tells the story probably better than anybody else could of the importance of Justin Seed Company to our community and to uh, the industry of agriculture in Oklahoma and around the country. We have a number of dignitaries that are here with us today, and I would like to introduce some of them. I know I'm going to miss somebody. Please don't be offended. We'll blame it on Joey if I, uh, if I accidentally miss you. But we've got a bunch of them. Please hold your applause until the end. But we're fortunate to have our uh, Oklahoma Secretary of Agriculture, Jim Reese, here with us. Thank you. Tom, Tanner Roberts is here from Senator uh, Langford's office. I saw him looking right back there in the back. Uh, Bennett Beard and Kirby Smith with Congressman Lucas's office. We work very closely with them, Congressman. They do a great job for us. Stan Ralston with the Oklahoma Department of Commerce. Uh, Dr. Thomas Kuhn with uh, Oklahoma State University. Thank you for coming over. Senator Roland Peterson, his wife Terry, right up front. Burlington, one of the greatest cities on the planet. Uh, Ray Lamb who is uh, the director of the Oklahoma Conservation Commission. <clears throat> Mike Kenna is here with the U.S. Golf Association, and just touching him will improve your golf score by three strokes. So, three lessons afterwards. Yes, make sure you catch him. <laughs> Representative John Piper, the mayor of the great city of Enid, Bill Shuey. Kirk Jewell is here, is president of the Oklahoma State University Foundation. Kirk, thanks for coming over. And then I also want to introduce uh, Lisa and Debbie from my office, if they would uh, raise their hands, they work very hard on putting this together today. Please let's give all of our dignitaries a great round of applause. <laughs> the first speaker that I would bring up, like to uh, bring up to the stage is our uh, governor of the great state of Oklahoma, Mary Fallon. She is a graduate of Oklahoma State University, and you're going to hear that over and over as we introduce our speakers today. All of us are waiting for Sunday to get our tournament bids, and we assume that we will make that happen. Uh, she was elected to Congress and uh, was also the uh, first Republican and first female lieutenant governor in the state of Oklahoma. She has been our uh, governor since the year 2010. She is now on the, the downhill slide, and we are so fortunate to have her in our community today. Anytime we've needed to reach out for something in economic development purposes or uh, trying to get somebody interested in our community. She's always been uh, uh, at the forefront of helping us make that happen. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Governor Mary Fowler.
course, you are the oldest and the largest seed company in the state of Oklahoma, certainly with a, a great reputation, as, as I mentioned. And of course, to be able to have the headquarters here in Eden, not only do you touch just Oklahoma, but I know you touch the rest of the nation and your products and services that you deliver. And who would have thought 125 years ago, think back to those days, of those old pictures that we saw, that one day you'd be selling seed on a website to people from outside the state. You may not even heard of Eden or heard of Johnson Seed, but even the website and how technology has just changed the business that you have. And of course, now you're all over the whole country, which is quite remarkable. We all know how important agriculture is to the state of Oklahoma. It's been important since the very beginning days of our statehood, certainly long before that. And it will continue to be a very important part of Oklahoma's economy. And that's why we're excited that I think you're going to have another 125 plus years, I hope, as future generations of, of the family come along and, and run this great company. But you know, agriculture has a huge impact on revenue in our state, on job creation, certainly providing food and products to Oklahoma. And as I was watching that video, I was thinking about how many lawns of people's homes have been touched by your company, how many football fields, golf courses, now, I, I couldn't even name all the things that your products have touched, but it's quite remarkable. And certainly, agriculture is big in our state. I was looking at some latest statistics of, of how, Oklahoma, how Oklahoma is impacted by agriculture. It produces $8 billion of revenue that generates in, in our economy, which shows how big it is. We have 34 million acres of agriculture production in our state. And we have over 321,000 people that have a job related to agriculture. And for 125 years, Johnson has been able to help those people develop all those jobs and opportunities and those investments to be able to create all kinds of, of businesses. So it's truly been a, a great, remarkable history for the Johnson family, but certainly the Myberg family. And I can still remember, Todd, you, you're from Enid, so you know how important the Myberg family is. But when I ran for office and, and Congressman Lucas was in the legislature and sat right in front of me when I was elected in 1990, but everyone always told me, when you go to Enid, you got to beat the Myberg family. And I always uh, knew who they were, always visited with your father, hope he's, hope he's doing well, and certainly have had the opportunity to work with Butch and Joey throughout the years and, and many of their family members. And how much your family has given back to our state, not just with this great company, but the generosity that you've spread throughout even throughout the state. And of course, I think you have this little university that you really love called OSU. Anytime I go to a football game, I always see my birds at the football game. But Blue certainly has been a patriarch of agriculture in our state, has received so many different awards. And to think about the family history, long back to 1893 and how he's carried on that tradition and future generations of you carry on that tradition. It's just truly remarkable. I know he's not here today, and I have a very special proclamation I'd just like to present to the Myberg family on behalf of all that you've done for our great state, for Oklahoma's economy, Eden's economy, and certainly for agriculture. So, I'm going to just real quickly, it's a real short one, but it's a commendation. Joey, if you'd like to come up, I'll present this to you. It says, Johnson Seed Company, be resolved, this governor's commendation is hereby presented to Johnson Seed Company in recognition of being in business in Oklahoma for a century and a quarter. Johnson Seed has a rich history built on innovation, determination, respect, and commitment to service. And it is my distinct honor to wish all of you the very best in this tremendous milestone of accomplishments which is being celebrated today, March 9th of 2018, and congratulations to a very well job done in our state. Congratulations to all of your family, to all of your employees. I don't want to forget to mention your employees, because employees build a great company too. Most important part, you're absolutely right. Congratulations to you.
Vice Governor, thank you so much for being here today. Would now like to uh, turn your eyes to the to the screen. We uh, Senator James Lankford really wanted to be here today and was unable to do it because of his schedule in the U.S. Senate. But uh, but he provided a video for us. Many of us know the senator from his time whenever he was the director at Falls Creek. We got to know him a little bit more whenever he represented the 5th District of Oklahoma as a congressman. And now for the last several years, that one-two punch of him and Senator Inhofe have just done amazing things in the U.S. Senate. So at this point, we'll hear from Senator Langford. To a business, to a family that's been leading in Oklahoma since before Oklahoma was Oklahoma, congratulations. 125 years is a big deal. It's a long legacy for your family and a tremendous asset for Enid and for all of Oklahoma. Thanks for your ethical leadership. Thanks for continuing to take care of so many families in the area and setting such a great example. Oklahoma's proud to have you. I'm glad that you're around and helped so many folks. Congratulations on 125 years of legacy. Oklahoma needs you 125 more. represents us up in Washington, D.C. Um, I, I would love to introduce him as a congressman, but really he's a farm boy from Cheyenne. And he understands everything that's uh, that's being housed in these warehouses just across the street. He has worked with, with the Mybergens for, for years and years, was first elected to Congress in 1994, and uh, has served as the chairman of the House Ag Committee. Congressman Lucas, thank you for being here. Let's give him a great big round of applause. <laughs> good as citizens and good business people and just a lot of fun the Nyberg family is. You can tell everyone in this room understood exactly what I mean. <laughs> Great people to the core. But in a family business, in a place like Oklahoma, if you're not that kind of an individual, obviously W.B. Johnston's was, or he wouldn't have started the process in a small community that ultimately led to all of this. You have to be the kind of people participate in the community. You have to be the kind of folks who are honorable and honest and needed. You have to provide the goods and services that people come to expect and want and depend on. So, great compliment, Joey, to you and Butch and Lou and generations past. It's impressive, 125 years. But I would also be remiss if I didn't note, as the governor alluded to, that the governor and I have a relationship that's gone back a very long time. She came to the legislature two years after me. And for three and a half years, I say this respectfully, Governor, you sat behind me. <laughs> and after a stellar career as Lieutenant Governor, she came to Washington and sat beside me in the United States Congress. And after four years of that joy, realized that she wanted to come home to Oklahoma as Governor. So kind of like George Patton and Omar Radley from the Second World War, she was junior to me, she was senior to me, and I respectfully follow her now everywhere she goes. What's <laughs> going on? But that's okay. That's okay. And one other admission I will admit to you. Yes, Linda Lucas uses my Bergen C. She paid full retail price. <laughs> you wouldn't expect anything less out of Joey. Thank you, Joey. And one final, one final thought, and I'll be ever so brief. It's that time of year again a comprehensive federal farm bill. And many of you know, and I say this admittedly, that the last farm bill was a little bit of a challenge. We started at 12, we ground through it at 13, we finally got it put together in 14. It shouldn't take two and a half years to be able to make sure we have the ability to raise the food we need, and our fellow citizens who need it have the ability to consume that food. It shouldn't take two and a half years. But as the governor and the lieutenant governor and the senator and the rep know, everything's just a little harder these days, right? Everywhere. But we work hard to try and get those things done. I'm confident there will be a 2018 farm bill to replace the 2014 farm bill. And I'm confident that it will be good for rural America and production agriculture. 
just because my friends in Johnston will get to sell a whole bunch more grass seed for those CRP acres, we'll get to sell a whole lot more seed for all of those other things we put in the ground. It just means they're helping our farmers and ranchers, our citizens, and the needs of everybody here at home in the world. Again, it's great to be here. This is the salt of the earth crowd. Governor, that got me better back east. <laughs>
focusing on the product and the individual, it's not skipped a beat. So for another 125 years, that's, gonna, that's not going to be a big deal. The next 200, 325 years, if the Lord tarries, will be just absolutely extraordinary. In Enid, Oklahoma, here's something else I want to make note of. I'm going to assume, Lou, over the years, your phone rang, and on the other end was maybe a corporation or some other folks not from Oklahoma wanting to buy you out or buy in. You had commitment to Enid, Oklahoma. I'm proud. I'm thankful of your commitment to Enid, Oklahoma. So, I mentioned the family, and I, I've talked to Joey so many times over the years. Uh, the governor mentioned it, the congressman referred to it as well. The family is awesome, but it's also the family of employees at Johnson Sea Company. The effort and the teamwork of everybody that works at this facility and elsewhere. So I think I was invited because I'm from here and I happen to be the lieutenant governor, but I want to be here as a citizen. This is an extraordinary day for the great state of Oklahoma. Joey, thank you for allowing me to be here. Thank you for your vision. And Lou, thank you for your steadfastness for so many years. God bless, God bless Johnson C for many, many more years. Well, the last thing we wanted to do today was say a bunch of nice things about Joey, and I apologize that happened way too much. But at this point, I would like to introduce the president of Johnston Seed Company, who is, uh, who is a strong, aggressive, energetic leader here in the community, but more than that, he's a really good friend to all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcome. Enjoy my work. <laughs> Grant, thank you for that absolutely wonderful introduction, because you have no idea how much pleasure I take in knowing that how nervous you are that I have a microphone and an audience. <laughs> so, but I must admit, uh, Brent hasn't been the only one that's nervous. Uh, ever since Debbie showed me the agenda, I was like, there's no way that I can say all that, that I have to say in 10 minutes. I mean, it'll take me 10 minutes just to get through talking about myself. <laughs> but I would like to introduce... Uh, the members of my family that are here that have supported me through everything. The last few years have been tough with the, the commodity climate the way it is and the changes that we've gone through and it's driven me nuts and I'm sure I've driven them nuts in the process. But my wife Leslie who is, is here for me through thick and thin, she's always there to support me no matter what. My grandpa Lou, he showed up, wonderful introduction by Lieutenant Governor Lamb. And uh, I still get to see him nearly every day. Nearly every day he still comes to the office. And uh, I'm very blessed to, to have him a part of my life still. And my dad, who, you know, even though he has retired now, he, he seems to have more things for me to do during his retirement than he did when he was my boss. So I'm very glad that he came. And my, my Aunt Mary and Uncle Roger, I wish that uh, they could be here with us, but they had a, a travel engagement. They, they're they enjoying the weather in uh, sunny Arizona. But I have to say, we've, we've been blessed today with the weather that we've had. But in all seriousness, I would really like to um, focus my speech, my presentation on the C Company employees. Um, it is only because of them that this event is possible, and it is only because of them that this company has been able to transform over the last two years, and it hasn't been easy. But their display of a pioneering spirit and grit is not by coincidence. And Congressman Lucas touched on it, Governor Fallon touched on it, and Todd Lamb touched on it. But it is directly correlated to our culture that began 125 years ago with one man's vision for change. Which button do I hit, Josh? <laughs> Turn it on first. Oh. oh, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to get a little abstract with you guys, and bear with me. 
I'm going to ask you all to close your eyes for just a minute. There's not going to be any tricks or surprises, but close your eyes. And I want you to think of what life was like outside of the state of Oklahoma in 1893. Think about it. Now think of that life outside of the state, but it gave you such a longing for change that you were willing to risk everything. Pack up all your belongings, gather your family, everything you owned, to take a chance at starting all over again. Think about that for a minute. You can all open your eyes now. But that is exactly what the settlers of the Cherokee Strip Land Run did. They loaded up their families. You can see these pictures here that I put up here. They gathered in by the thousands. They loaded up their families in wagons, on horses, on trains to come to Enid, Oklahoma to start a new life, to stake their claim as something new. And they did this to participate in the nation's largest land run to begin a new life. Man, that had to be tough. You know, I honestly don't know how they did it. I don't know how they survived. But remember, the land run, our actual anniversary is not until uh, September of 1893. But, you know, as Congressman Lucas said, we like to party. So we figured that we start celebrating now. But, uh, you know, September of 1893, there's not a whole lot of growing days left. You don't get to come here and stake your claim and, oh, I'm going to grow a garden and have food. They didn't have food. They didn't have any stores. Uh, Everything that they they owned, they had on their backs, on one of these wagons or in this train. But I just can't imagine the grit and the pioneering spirit that it took to endure that journey. And right here, uh, for those of you that might not be super familiar with the Cherokee Strip, it's pictured here. But it started just to the west of Osage County. It went all the way to the Oklahoma Panhandle. It was a couple counties deep, and there was three derby locations across the northern part of the strip, and three derby locations across the southern part of the strip, and there were three land offices across the middle. And W.B. Johnston, my great-great-grandfather, Butch's great-grandfather, and Lou's grandfather, worked at the land office in Enid, and that is where it all began. Everybody that came in to inquire about the land run would ask, where do I buy seed? Where do I buy feed? Where do I buy coal? Where do I trade my livestock? And uh, he was light bulb and, and bought the local feed and seed store. Went to Kansas City. Of course, he quit his job at the land office. Went to Kansas City, bought a train car of hard red winter wheat and loaned seed to the settlers to help them get started. He would loan them the seed, they'd plant it, they'd harvest, and upon harvest they'd pay him back times two what he had loaned them, and then whatever the difference was, he would, uh, he would buy the difference. So W.B. Johnston is, you know, the grain company was the largest of the operating functions. But selling of seed was the very first operating function as a business 125 years ago. And 125 years later, we're still doing it, and we are recognized globally for our Bermuda grasses. But why has Johnston Seed Company continued to thrive for 125 years? Some of our speakers have touched on it, and I couldn't agree more. Family, for one. Family is our number one core value as an organization. But we also still hold sacred the values that were established by W.B. Johnston and by those Oklahoma settlers, the early Oklahoma settlers that cho chose to start a new life. And Johnston Seed Company, we still hire a team that displays the grit that it takes to be a pioneer. And that's not easy, but that's Oklahoma. So again, I want to thank you. You guys don't know how much it means to me that you're all here supporting us, supporting me and our family, and supporting Enid. Uh, thank you to the Brent and the ERDA that helped us organize this, and the Enid Chamber for the uh, ribbon cutting ceremony and uh, helping us promote this. 
But most of all, I want to thank the employees of Johnston Seed Company because this event would not have happened without them. And in fact, I think they did such a good job, I think we should do it every year. But <laughs> I, got, I got a really bad look from Chance and some of the others and Josh and Emily that really uh, worked hard on, on getting this organized. Every time I'd come out to ask questions, they'd be like, no, that's strike one. Go back to your office. <laughs> so, um, no, without them, Johnston Seed Company wouldn't be here, and without them, we wouldn't be having this event. So, this uh, this event is not for me. It's not for the Mybergens. It's for our employees because they've made this possible. But now, if I'm not mistaken, I uh, I think we're ready to conduct a ribbon cutting ceremony to kick off another 125 years of business. Those uh, the coasters are specially made coasters with their uh, with their logo on them. They all uh, please make sure you take those with you as a uh, memento from today. Also, out to my right, your left, there's a whole bunch of vendors out there, and that's also where hamburgers and hot dogs are going to be served here in just a moment. So please go through. They've got a whole bunch of. In fact, they let you go through the line maybe three or four times. Just keep eating until uh, you just can't eat anymore. And. Uh, uh, let me see, I think that's probably about it. The last thing that I will say though before we cut the ribbon is uh, I asked Joey, I said, so uh, uh, we have wonderful weather today. It's just amazing that we have this uh, wonderful heated weather. I said, I wonder why we had such wonderful weather. And he, he looked at me and he said, well, it's, it's because I pray all the time. And I kind of giggled and I thought, well, then, you know, it's a cliche. And he stopped me. He looked right back at me and said, no, Brent, I, I do. I pray every day. And, uh, and he wanted me to... to uh, uh, provide a blessing for the food before we go through the line, so if you'll join me in, in uh, prayer. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this wonderful day that you have given us, the beautiful weather and, and the outstanding attendance and the fellowship that we have with friends and family. We thank you for Lou Myberg and being here today and, and the recovery that he's been through this week and just ask that you continue to heal him. And Lord, we're just so thankful today for uh, Johnston Seed Company and, and all the employees and, and the uh, longevity of that company and just ask that you to bless them for years and years to come. Please bless the food and let it be nourishment to our bodies. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. The ribbon cutting is going to be under this sign to my uh, left entrance into the, the building. And if we could have the uh, congressman of Dr. Kuhn, Lieutenant Governor John and Roland, as well as the uh, governor and the Myberg and family, and then all of our, our uh, chamber ambassadors, if you guys would make your way over here to this sign, please.